Hey guys, it's Dwight with Dwight Pours. How are you today? I am fine. I'm doing great. Uh, we're going to do a pour today, and we're going to do a pour on an 18 by 24 canvas. And what I thought I would do today is actually do the pour live, so to speak. Um, I'm not going to speed it up. I'm going to show you my process. The only time I speed it up is when I put it on time lapse. And I'll try to explain what I'm doing step by step so you understand why I tilt it this way, why I tilt it that way, and hopefully we get a great result. So I'm going to start with the colors I'm going to be using today. I have this purple. It's called Poetic Plum, and that's the DecoArt Americana brand paint. And that's going to go in my puddle somewhere in the middle. Then I have Purple Pearl. Again, that's a Dazzling Metallics, and that's also a DecoArt paint. Now I'm doing something different today. I'm gonna to lay a little bit of a base coat. Uh, this is a little bit of Calypso Blue and I used um, DecoArt's Satin Enamel. Now it's very, very rare that I use a Satin Enamel actually in the pour, especially when I'm doing um, dump and swirls. So we're gonna give that a shot today. And while I have the paint here, let me show you the consistency. Um, it's supposed to be pretty thin. As you can see, it's just sort of a little bit sinking, just it's going right in, okay? Okie dokie. And lastly, my dump paint is Artist Loft Soft Body Black. So remember guys, I use the same formula for all my paints. It's one part paint, two to three parts Floetrol, a drizzle of Liquitex pouring medium, and water to thin. I've been getting a lot of questions about my dump paint, and I'm just gonna say that I use Artist Loft Soft Body Black. I've been using that version for quite some time. Previous to that, it was um, the Acrylic Flow. I've used different paints. I even tried using this Montmartre Black as my dump paint, and it did nothing. I had no cells. I tried it again. I thinned it even more. It still didn't work. So I don't like to experiment too much when I know that something actually works for me. Okay, guys, I'm moving my paint out of the way. Let me bring my canvas in, and I'm going to stop this for a second, move my tripod back with the lovely leg of my tripod right there, and we'll start in just a second. Okay, guys, I'm back. There's my canvas. It's already prepped. Today, I painted it with black because I don't want the white edges to come through. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to start with this um, satin enamel mixture. Again, you just want to make sure it's nice and um, smooth and mixed in really well. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to pour this down. I'm going to go basically for around the center, if not slightly off center. Okay, okay. Just going to move around a little bit to spread it out. I think what's important when you do paint, especially if you're doing a puddle pour, is always make sure you know where your center of the paint is. So in other words, if I were to stop right here, there's more paint here than there is down here. That potentially can affect the composition um, when I move my paints around a little bit later. So the funny thing is I have a bubble right in the middle of my paint that is basically well, it just popped. But it was basically showing me where my center of the, the weight of my paint is. And right now, that's right about in here. So the first color I'm going to put down is this Poetic Plum. Again, you want to mix it. Make sure it's all mixed in really well before you put it down. I'm going to also go back and forth with the purple. So I want them to kind of intermix. Okie doke. Last but not least, we're going to go with the Artist Loft Soft Body Black on top. And then we'll move it around. So I'm not going to dump this. I'm just going to pour it sort of in the middle, nice and simple. Ooh, I 
just saw a big lump go in there. Hopefully I can get that lump before, <laughs> before it messes up the composition. Okie doke. Here we go. Just gonna move it down to this corner. Back down over here. Down to this corner here. Last but not least, bring it all the way down to the end, to the last corner. I'm trying to get these over the edge. And bingo. Okay, doke. So I always bring my paint back. It's already starting to react. Now I move it around like this. People have asked me questions. The reason I do that is it helps open up the cells. Okay, so let me dry my hands off. So the thing is, you know, I get these like caterpillars in here. There's some paint there, but sometimes it fills up just nicely. You don't even notice them at the end when it's dry. It's pretty thin there. So again, I get my handy dandy torch, pop as many bubbles as I can. Sometimes I pop up the corners to see how that works. Okay guys, I'm gonna put this on time-lapse and um, you'll, you'll see how it starts to fill in the rest. Now the interesting thing is, is that I lost a lot of the purple and the um, poetic plum. Um, and I knew that the base coat is gonna come through. So I'm hoping some of the plum comes through here, maybe some more around here so it's not all just blue in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna put this on time-lapse and we will see what happens next. Hey guys, it's Dwight. I'm back with the initial wet results. And I just want to show you some of the details in here. From afar, it looks like all the purple and sort of that plum were pushed out to the sides. But let me show you up close because behind and around these cells, you can see some of that purple coming through. So here's the corner down here. And you can just see the purple. It's beautiful. These over here are gorgeous as well. So there's no real difference in the composition and or how the paints reacted by using satin enamel in the um, sort of base coat that I put down. Um, I was just trying out, sort of experimenting, see how that would go. I am gonna go through and just sort of highlight some of these in here. There's not much to really clean out. I just wanna maybe dot them because they provide some more interest. Yeah, I think that's about it. Great. Well, actually, I walked around this way and I liked the orientation like this a little bit better. You can tell me what you think. So something I'm gonna do right now, stay tuned. I am going to, see that purple one up here? I'm gonna show you how I varnish. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you to my garage. It's not a fancy setup. I'm just gonna spray varnish. I'll probably put it on a time-lapse maybe or maybe just speed it up in post-production so you're not just watching me spray, spray, spray. But then I'll show you the dry results and how beautiful and brilliant this should be when it's all said and done. Okay, guys, um, hold on. I'm going to go and set up in my garage, and we'll get started here in just a minute. Okay, guys, there's my cat. That's Cassius. He's checking things out before I got in the garage. So let me show you what I use. I use this as my varnish. It's a gloss varnish. 
This one's our Newton Professional. Sometimes I use Grumbacher. All I'm gonna do is do basically one good coat and um, that should be enough. Okay, I'm gonna head out to my garage right there. We'll get started in just a second. Just a quick tour of the wet varnish. I don't want to get too close. I don't want any hair to drop in it. So I'm going to let this dry and then I will show you on the wall what it looks like inside my house. Okay guys, we'll see you in a few. Okay guys, I'm back. Um, it is varnished and it's dry. I'm gonna let it sit up here on the wall to kind of cure a little bit longer. Um, it's hard because I have a window directly opposite of it. Let's see here. I'm walking around my studio. You can see some of the glare on it. You can see how nice and bright the colors are, how they pop more, especially in the sunshine. I love the way it looks around the middle there. Yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. Again, we walk around the other side here a little bit better. So I just did a simple light coat. Um, you probably saw me crouching down a lot walking around because I wanted to make sure there was an even coat so I can see how much of the paint is covered um, and how much is pooling, if any at all. So even like this one here, you can see the light coat. I know there's a glare, but I'm showing that on purpose. I just do a simple coat. I just want to kind of seal it. And that's what I did here. I'm hoping this one goes in my show that I'm going to have next March um, solo exhibition, including this monochromatic one, <laughs> minus the glare, and these two on the wall there. The next one to varnish is the blue one right there. I did that one a couple days after the one I just did. Um, I think that's gonna look great too. Those are metallics. So hey guys, I'm pretty happy. I think it turned out great. I think today's painting did as well. Um, and so there you have it. Okay guys, thanks for watching and um, look forward to seeing you soon.